Today I want to continue the discussion on the Four Horsemen and how they relate to infidelity. Last time we talked about stonewalling and I'm still laughing at the memories that went through my mind when I was doing that because I just will tell you stonewalling was a huge part of our life. The only thing that was more prevalent or I, sh I guess I should say equally as prevalent as stonewalling was defensiveness. And defensiveness is definitely one of the four horsemen. And you would have to work really hard to find someone who was more defensive than me. Now, the journey of understanding defensiveness was really hard because I finally learned one day that defensiveness is actually blaming your spouse. And so I would get defensive all the time. But here's one of the critical components. And I want to say this early in the blog. The reason I got so defensive is because in my mind I had justified my affair a thousand times. I had this long standing uh, simmering feelings of anger, of resentment, of bitterness. And so in my mind I had blamed Samantha for my affair. I mean, if she'd have done this, if she'd have done that, if you'd have done this, if you'd have been here, if you'd have done that, if you wouldn't have done this, and if you wouldn't have done that, I would have never cheated. So when she started to kind of lay into me, or when she kind of went after me, I would immediately get defensive because deep down inside, I was blaming her for my affair anyway. It was a complete fiasco. And that's what we do when we get defensive, is we're actually blaming our spouse or we're tapping into this untapped well of blame and minimization and justification of our affair so we get really fired up and say well if you'd have done this or if you'd have done that so defensiveness is a kick in the teeth what's funny is down the road when we got into a safe place Samantha would get defensive and I would laugh when she would get defensive and it was kinda like I was trying to be contemptuous or, or if I was trying to be a littler but I really wasn't. It was just that I was seeing me in her. And so she would get defensive and she would like resort to these defensive tactics. And I would laugh and then it would set her off. But what, what was happening is I was laughing that she was doing what I used to do and she never would believe me. She would say, you're mocking me. You're making fun of me. I'm hurting. And, and it was like, no, I'm not. But I'm seeing how I used to be. And that would last for 30 seconds, and then I would see the anger kind of rise inside of her, and I would say, no, absolutely, let's talk. Because <laughs> it just, it wouldn't work. So let me give you some helpful pointers. If you're an unfaithful, I've got to tell you, I know exactly what it's like to be defensive, but you can't do it. You'll never win. If you blame your spouse for your affair, you're, you're just not ever going to gain ground. So allow... This is one of the best things that Rick and another mentor ever told me. They said, allow the light to be shined upon you. Own it. Take it. Lock the chamber of defensiveness and blame and justification and minimization away when you're talking to your spouse. Allow the light to be shined on you and consciously, with an, an intentionality, work towards communicating your grief at what you've done to them. And then they assured me to understand that later down the road, you'll be able to focus on some things that you felt were inadequate, the struggles, the weaknesses. Not that those, here's the disclaimer, not that those inadequacies or struggles of Samantha would ever justify my affair. The fact is, I still had issues inside of me. And later, here, you'll enjoy this. Later, Samantha told me one day, she said, I knew that I had issues. And I knew that I needed to talk about those issues, but I wasn't going to talk about them until I felt safe enough. And the only way I was going to talk about them was if I felt safe enough. And the only way that I would feel safe is seeing you own your part and not get defensive. So if you're an unfaithful, do you want to talk about the issues of feeling rejected or feeling ignored or feeling like another child or feeling like your needs weren't met? You probably do. Here's the best way to do it. Humble yourself, legitimately own your mess. 
own it with an understanding that if you'll own your mess, eventually you'll be able to talk about the mess in your spouse's life. But they will never feel safe. They'll never ever want to talk about it. They'll never ever be willing to talk about their mess until they see that you are not getting defensive and that you are not trying to make excuses, but you're just owning what you have done. You're displaying grief. You're displaying empathy. You're displaying remorse. In short, you are a safe person. Now, if you're a betrayed and you're dealing with an unfaithful who's incredibly defensive, realize that they probably are dealing with a whole lot of unresolved issues in their life. You're not going to fix those. You're not even going to reconcile those. You're going to have to be the healthy person and find a safe place, a third party to go to begin to talk about all of the issues because they are getting defensive because they probably are blaming you. The reality is they don't get it. That's why they're being defensive. They're probably not healthy and they're not showing a lot of remorse or empathy because they don't get it yet. You are not going to be the one, and I'm sorry to say it, but you're not going to be the one that helps them get it. You're going to have to get to Rick. You're going to have to get to the weekend or an online course or, or an expert who's trained in infidelity and has treated it for longer than 10 or 15 years and has actually been through it themselves. They're not going to get it. They're not going to hear it from you. They're just going to get more defensive because they feel cornered by you. And if you ever corner a, an angry, vicious animal, what does that animal eventually do? Eventually, it finally says, OK, enough is enough. I'm either going to try and break free and run or I'm going to lash out and attack you. And so if you're dealing with a defensive person, which you probably are, strive to do no more damage, find a safe place, find a safe third-party mediator, and reach out for help.